Hi, welcome to the DevOps Dialogue by Dell. My name is Florian. I'm a product technologist at Dell Technologies and contributor to the Kubernetes SIG storage community. Today, I want to discuss with you something we name container storage modules. These modules are additional sidecar containers of pod that you're going to enable on top of the Dell CSI driver. The goal is to enrich the CSI experience and cover some of the aspects of storage management that are not within the scope of the CSI spec today. The first one I want to discuss with you is named CSM observability. Within the CSI spec today, if you decided to implement it, something we do, uh, for free, you're going to get for all of your PVC, the size of your PVC, the PVC use, the number of inode free, and so on. All of these metrics will be available for free through the Cube API. We have CSM observability enabled. We're going to enrich that with performance metrics. So for each of, of your volume, you're going to get response time, IOPS, bandwidth. Uh, we're going to expose pool capacity details some topology between your consumers. So a lot more KPIs and insights that you can consume through your usual tool set, Prometheus and Grafana. The second module is named CSM authorization. With CSM authorization enabled, basically we will guarantee that all of your Kube cluster will have true RBAC implemented for storage objects. We'll make sure that one cluster cannot touch the object of the other. We enable fine-grained quota and have a better way of dealing with permission access. The next one, and probably the most popular one, is named CSM replication. Again, today within the scope of a CSI specification or even Kubernetes, there is no real definition around how to replicate your infrastructure. Every Dell storage is today have a support for replication. Shall it be active-active, async, synchronous, or else? With CSM replication enabled, you can control directly from Kubernetes Directive the way you want to deploy your application on one site or another, the way you want to fail over. Shall it be a single stretch cluster across one site, two sites, sorry? or maybe two different clusters that are each are connected to its own site. The goal is really to make the Kubernetes admin and developer autonomous in the way they're going to manage the resiliency of their application. The next one, which is named Resiliency. With that module, we're going to take care of scenario where you have node ungraceful shutdown within your Kube infrastructure. So, Let's say a node crashes abruptly and you have stateful set running on top of it. Kubernetes is being very conservative and won't risk the leads right away. With resiliency enabled, no need for human intervention anymore. You can just like risk it all in, in a blink. The next one, which we named Group Snapshot, will, as you guessed, deal with taking snapshot of multiple volume at once. So I'm sure that within your ecosystem, your Kubernetes infrastructure, you have databases, maybe Elasticsearch, Cassandra, Couchbase, that runs with multiple instances, and each of those have one, two, or multiple volumes attached to it. So in a scenario where you have, let's say, three Elasticsearch instances running in parallel with three volume, with Group Snapshot enabled, you're going to be able to snap them all together, all at once, and have a crash-consistent snapshot. The next module, named App Mobility, Application Mobility, will help with on-demand workload movement. So you have your stateful app with its resources, stateful set, services, uh, certificate maybe, a couple of PVCs and PVs. With App Mobility enabled, you can move that app from anywhere to anywhere. Shall it be into the cloud, running into a Kubernetes cluster backed by EBS volume? You can pull it in on-prem all at once, um, no matter the storage class source or destination. It's very handy for migration or you, when you need to crunch some information in some particular places. The last one deals with encryption. 
And that module, once enabled, offers the capability to have on-the-fly encryption for your pods. Basically, upon pod startup, we're going to gather a, a key within Ashcorp Vault or any kind of uh, encrypted database. And everything that's going to be written to disk by the pod will be ciphered on the fly. These modules are open source. The last two ones are in tech preview. And if you want to try it out, I engage you to go to the Slack, Dell Slack, and get the discussion with us and get to more, more with it. Thanks for your attention. Till next time.